Hi everyone. Welcome to the Korg PA Keyboard Style Creation Workshop Series. This is the second video in the series. I am doing it in two languages, English and Malayalam. If you want to switch the language, the link is in the description. If you haven't watched the previous video, the link for that is also in the description. This video series is for helping users of all type of PA series keyboards. Even though I am doing it on a PA 4X, it can be used even on a PA 300, 500, 600 or any PA models. There will be small differences in the interface and features of the record mode and menus in different models. But the overall functions would be the same across all models. In this video, I will show you how to create a new style. The intro music in this video is one of the styles which I created. We will try to recreate almost the same here. We are going to the style record mode by pressing the record button and selecting new to create a new style from scratch. We will record the variation 1 with CV1 first. I am setting the CV length to 1. It is going to be a 1 bar pattern. Since the CV length is 1, all the tracks record length should be 1. I am not setting the resolution value for now, keeping it as high which means the resolution or auto quantize is not set. It is to show you what is the difference if it is not set. We will record the hi-hat pattern in the percussion track. Select the sound for the track. Turn the metronome on. Press start to record. When you press start, you will get a one bar pre-record count before the recording starts. Now the hi-hat pattern is done. But since the resolution was not set, the notes are not in the exact timing. We can go to the quantize menu in the style edit page and quantize it to make it correct. Select the quantize value and press execute. You can undo the quantize if the result is not correct. Now it is quantized, but one note is still incorrect. So I am deleting all the recordings in this track using the delete track option. We will record it fresh by activating the resolution. It will quantize the notes automatically. Now the pattern is ready and it is in the correct timing as well. This is a benefit of using the resolution while recording. Now let's record the drum pattern. Before recording, if you need to practice the pattern with all the other tracks playing, press the track again so that it will turn grey. Press start and the pattern will start playing without the pre-record timer. We can practice the pattern now. Now we will record the pattern. Touch the track again to ensure it is red which means it is ready for recording. We can record the notes in multiple takes or record the notes one by one or whichever is easy for you. Press start. Now the drum track is complete. Next we will record the bass pattern. Selecting the sound for that. Setting the octave to minus 1 to access the lower octave as well. Practicing the pattern. Now we will record it. That is complete. Next is the accompaniment track. We will do it with the normal guitar sound. That is done. You can add more patterns in the other tracks as well if you need. Maybe a pad sound in the accompaniment 2 track. Once the recording is complete, to preview it we can go to the menu and select the element track controls. Here you can play the style, change chords or element and you can play it with the piano sound on the right part. This is how the normal guitar pattern will sound like. We will see how the guitar mode makes it better and how easy it is. I am deleting all the recordings in this track. 
Now changing the track type to guitar mode track from the style track control section in the menu. This track is a guitar mode track now. You will get different strumming patterns, effects, noises. The lower octave has some more patterns. We will make the octave to minus one to access them. I'll explain the guitar mode in detail in another video. For now I'll use some basic strumming patterns and record it. Practicing the pattern. Now recording the pattern. Isn't it better than the normal guitar track? And it is easy to create as well. Now we will create variation 2. For that we can copy the contents from variation 1 and modify it a little bit. To copy it go to the edit menu and select style copy. Select the source and destination. Here we will set the variation 1 as a source and variation 2 as a destination. Select all tracks so that everything will be copied. Now press execute. Here we are copying the element from the current style which we are editing now. We can also copy from another style. For that you can select the style from here. When this value is current, it means it is copying from the current style. Now go to the variation 2. The patterns from variation 1 are now in the variation 2. I'll delete the drum track and record a new pattern in it. complete now. Let's preview it. When we copied the variation 1 to variation 2, the recordings and the entire settings like track sounds, key, code and entity from variation 1 were copied to variation 2. But there will be situations when you want to record a totally different pattern in another variation but keep the same sounds and settings in the tracks. Now if you go to the variation 3, the track sounds are the default ones. But in variation 1 the sounds are different. To copy the sounds and settings to an element, you can use the copy option in the page menu. Now we want to copy the sounds from variation 1 to variation 3. Selecting sound, press OK. Now go to the variation 3. The sound for the tracks are now copied here. That's it for this video. In the next video we will continue working on this style. Thank you.